there are a few sounds in the car world quite as exciting as the VTEC kick. That sudden surge in power and a sound from a high revving Honda engine has soundtracked countless driving experiences, from legendary sports cars to, well, maybe your neighbor's souped up Civic. It's one of the longest running and most enthusiastically celebrated pieces of automotive technology. As nicely aspirated engines see a bit of resurgence, let's delve into what exactly makes VTEC so darn interesting. Honda has a long history of innovation in naturally aspirated engines, those that rely on good old-fashioned air intake for power rather than forced induction like turbochargers. Their first major success story in the US was Compound Vortex Controlled Combustion, or CVCC, introduced in the 1974 Civic during the OPEC oil crisis. CVCC used a pre-chamber in the engine head to achieve more complete fuel burn, making these small Honda motors more efficient and practical than their larger American counterparts. VTEC emerged from a similar spirit of innovation. By the mid-80s, turbochargers were becoming more common, offering a way to boost power at higher engine speeds. However, turbos have drawbacks. They suffer from lag and were in the early days less fuel efficient. Honda wanted to keep the responsiveness and predictability of naturally aspiration, but offer power that could compete with the turbocharged cars of the same class. In a high-performance naturally aspirated engine, airflow is king. The camshaft, with its egg-shaped lobes, controls how much air gets into the cylinders by opening and closing intake valves. More aggressive cam lobes push the valves open for longer durations, allowing more air in. Now for maximum power at high revs, you want the most airflow possible. This means a camshaft with very aggressive lobes. But there's a catch. This aggressive cam comes with big downsides at lower RPMs. For instance, rough idling. You see cars with super aggressive cams tend to have a choppy idle. But it doesn't stop there. Massive lobes can also lead to bad low end performance. You see with the valves open too long at low piston speeds, the engine can't build up enough pressure in the cylinder for efficient combustion. And then it also suffers from poor fuel economy. An aggressive cam guzzles gas to keep the engine from stalling. So all of this means that most production cars have relatively tame cams, as a smaller, less aggressive cam avoids these problems. But it also sacrifices the top end power. That's the hallmark of a naturally aspirated engine. So how do you get the best of both worlds? Well, VTEC is how. You see, Honda's answer, introduced in 1989 on the Integra in Japan, was ingenious in its simplicity. The camshaft has two sets of lobes, one aggressive and one mild-mannered. At low RPMs, during normal driving, only the milder lobes touch the rocker arms that open the valves. The aggressive lobes spin along but don't do anything. At a specific high RPM determined by the engine computer, an electronic solenoid opens, allowing oil to flow into a channel in the camshaft that connects all the rocker arms. This oil pressure pushes a pin that locks another rocker arm into place under the aggressive cam lobe. Now, the aggressive cam and its corresponding rocker arm control how long and how far the valves open. When the revs drop, the solenoid closes and the pin disengages and the engine goes back to its less aggressive cam profile. The result, an engine that is docile around town but turns into a beast at high RPMs. This technology was revolutionary. I mean the 1995 Integra Type R produced a staggering 200 horsepower from a tiny 1.8 litre engine. Back then, squeezing over 100 horsepower per litre from a naturally aspirated engine was supercar territory. And of course, there's that iconic VTEC sound that lets everybody know you mean business. Now the beauty of VTEC is its mechanical simplicity. This allows it to be combined with other technologies for even more precise engine control. Honda's iVTEC adds variable valve timing to the mix for even better airflow optimization. In the 2000s, Honda even developed a system with infinitely variable cam phasing alongside VTEC but shout the concept for production. 
In recent years, stricter emission regulations and the need for ever-increasing power outputs have pushed Honda towards turbocharged engines. Here, VTEC plays a supporting role with the extra lobes now on the exhaust camshaft to help spool up the turbocharger faster and eliminate lag. This turbo VTEC doesn't have the classic VTEC sound, but it's still effective. The Civic Type R, for instance, is praised for its responsive throttle and minimal turbo lag, thanks in part to this exhaust VTEC system. To end it off, whether naturally aspirated engines will enjoy a lasting comeback remains to be seen. But one thing is for sure, as long as Honda builds engines, VTEC in some form will likely be there, leaving its mark on driving enthusiasts everywhere. But at the end of the video, I really hope you guys found this video informative as well as entertaining, so let me know down below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something as a like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?